Patrick Netherton Show, 1130 The Tiger. He's Rogers. I'm Patrick. And you know here on the Patrick Netherton Show, we talk sports, we talk life, we talk food, we laugh at, at my dating life. But we also love to talk barbecue, as you, as you all know. And interestingly, the barbecue segments are some of the most well-received. Uh, and so, Rogers, I was going on a, a guy's weekend trip to Kansas City. And I, I heard from my buddy uh, Brian Bingham over in, in uh, Longview, who was at uh, was it Sunbird Barbecue now. Uh, was it Bodacious? And I heard from Andrew Kasky, who's at Bad Wolf Barbecue over in Ruston. And I heard from Stephen Joseph, who was uh, over there in, in at Riverport in Jefferson. Yeah, so I hear I hear every single one of them, and they say, look, if you go to Kansas City, you've got to go to Hart Barbecue. Like, yeah, check out the Arthur Bryant's, check out the Joe's, check out the Gates, uh, Jack Stack, Q39. Like, there's a bunch of places, but they said, look, you've got to hit Hart Barbecue. And it just so happens that the weekend before our trip up there, Hart Barbecue threw a huge uh, charity fundraising uh, barbecue event. And just so happens that our, our friend Andrew Kasky from Ruston and our friend Brian Bingham from, from Longview got to go up there and and uh, and and serve and, and enjoy it and check it out. And they said, go check out Hart Barbecue. So I did and uh, got to meet the great Tyler Harp, who is doing uh, decidedly new school barbecue in decidedly old school Kansas City. And he joins us now. Tyler, man, how the heck are you, brother? Man, I'm really good, Patrick. Thanks for having us on. We're, uh, we're cooking in 95-degree uh, weather today, so I get a little break and sit in my truck in the A.C. for a minute and talk to you. That so a baby. You, uh, you helped me escape it for a minute. I appreciate that. Hey, that's what we're here for. You know, it's interesting because you're one of those places. You're only open one day a week, um, and, and that's sort of a snows kind of, of schedule that you have going on. Snows, of course, was, was number one on the Texas Monthly Top 50 list uh, last go-around. Uh, kind of walk us through how you got into this, uh, the decision to go one day a week. Um, and, you know, just, just kind of walk us through how this came to be and how Heart Barbecue started. Yeah, so uh, my dad uh, and his brother, a couple of their buddies, they were on the competition scene when I was growing up. So as a kid, I was always around it. Um, I love love barbecue, love baseball, kind of my favorite childhood memories. And as I got older, um, I had worked in a butcher shop, I had worked in steakhouses, and um, it was all something that was familiar to me and something that um, I knew was kind of in the right realm of what I wanted to do, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, and so um, I turned 30 working in the steakhouse, and I kind of thought, man, you know, I'm not in my 20s anymore, I just turned 30, um, this isn't exactly what I want to do, so um, I kind of just tried to figure it out and um as you you know when you're in the fine dining scene there's a lot of party and a lot of good times and a lot of stuff like that going on and i kind of wanted to break away from that so i could focus on um uh, getting where i wanted to be in life and so as uh i kind of quit hanging out late night with the with the party group and i would go home and kind of the way to keep my mind off everything would i would just start smoking meat so i had a little offset backyard smoker and uh, started with that and then kind of evolved. Uh, Daniel Vaughn wrote an article called Limp Brisket where he kind of talked bad about Kansas City Brisket at the time. This was in 2016. Mm -hmm. the, the article had irritated my dad and my uncle, and they got kind of fired up, and they said, well, let's go take a trip to Texas and see what they're doing. So in the fall of 16, we did that and uh, really liked the brisket, really liked a lot of food. I think I went to 13 different spots that first trip to Texas, and uh, we were in Central Texas. We we got to go to Snows and Louis Miller, and mm -hmm. a lot of the classic places. We went down to Lockhart, but we also got to do La Barbecue and Valentinas and some of the newer newer school spots too. And so, um, within a month of coming back from that trip to Texas, I had went from a backyard smoker to uh, about a 150 gallon smoker, not real big, but I could cook about six briskets on it, and it was kind of the next step for us. And it kind of grew like wildfire from there, and we started getting uh, getting to meet a lot of really good people and hang around them and uh, got to be around people that were smarter than me. So I was working at the steakhouse still full-time. I was working at the ammunition plant as well and doing barbecue on the weekends. And so 
Um, growing up on the competition scene, I, I, I wanted to do something different because of how much money you had to put into it and how much work it was. Right. So we took the money that we made in our driveway on Saturday. I saved that, and then whenever I got enough every six weeks or three months, whatever it was, I would take that money and go and travel to learn from somebody that knew a lot more than I did. And uh, really to this day, that's what I still do. We got to do Windy City Smokeout um, in July with Hoodoo Brown Barbecue from Ridgefield, Connecticut. We got to our own festival here, and we just got back from Southern California. So kind of why we're still doing, we're actually doing two days a week now. We do Friday nights. Okay. We have kind of a limit, limited menu. And uh, we'll start service for that here in about an hour, and then we'll do our Saturday full barbecue menu. So still traveling, still learning, uh, meeting a lot of great people, and that's kind of why we keep our hours a little bit lower. So it'll afford us to, to keep growing uh, our knowledge. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's interesting. When you when you came back from Texas, did you realize that Daniel was right? Um, or were y'all still, we still kind of hacked him. off? Yeah, we didn't, you know, we – we knew there was a lot of really good food there. So, um, you know, it was really my dad and my uncle that were hacked off. Right. Dude, I kind of just used it as an opportunity to learn and open my eyes a little bit. And, uh, you know, well, well, let's find out what we can, what we can see. And we saw a lot of different things. And on that trip, we got a whole brisket from Franklin. So we got to get a whole brisket and go back to the hotel and cut that up. And so that was an experience in itself. And, uh, yeah, we enjoyed every bit of it, though. The food was great, and then it slowly continued to grow on us as any cuisine does. You know, Texas barbecue is almost its own cuisine, and mm-hmm. so when you start eating stuff, more starts growing on you more, and we eventually became addicts. You know, and it's interesting, Tyler, because what Kansas City, I think, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like what Kansas City is most known for is burn ends. That's where they, they came from. It's yeah. where they originated, and it's brisket. So yep. it's burn ends is the thing and ribs, those are the two things. Right. But the burn brisket definitely. But isn't um, it isn't it interesting that for a place that, that and I, I agree with Daniel, I, I'm not a huge fan of the brisket by and large at the sort of traditional places in Kansas City, but the burn ends yeah. are delicious. And it doesn't that yeah. doesn't seem to compute, right? You would think if you can do good burn ends, which is just brisket cubed up and then and sauced and smoked again you would think you'd be able to do just good regular brisket, but for whatever reason, it, it doesn't necessarily uh, follow. Yeah, it's definitely been a big volume game in Kansas City, um, and I think there's a lot of guys that are getting into it now that are doing more of the hand-sliced, um, cooked to the correct temperature brisket um, for serving. And so, um, you know, I, I think two years ago, I was probably about the only one here doing it, and mm-hmm. now there's probably five or six, maybe seven other guys doing it. So, um it's evolving quickly. People do like this style, and uh, yeah, it's just one of those things that people are catching on. And you know, you know, Kansas City, I think, is known for good sides, good ribs, burn-ins, and you know, we try to honor all that, but we want to add another element to it as well. Absolutely. Talking to Tyler Harp from Harp Barbecue in Kansas City. Um, the, the other thing that I was happy to see when we showed up was you had a line out the door. And they were, you know, people were lined up and ready to go. And you had mentioned that you were interested to see because you had just come back from your festival. So you weren't serving that weekend before you were at your festival. And you were kind of curious if people were going to show up that next weekend. And they did. Uh, Are you starting to see that as a sort of weekend and week out thing now where people are going to be lined up and ready to go when you open up? Yeah, we were rolling really hard, you know, right before COVID. Um, I remember in February of 2020, um, especially a couple weeks right after the Chiefs had won the Super Bowl there, we would have 100, 150 people in line at 9.30 in the Mm. morning. Mm. And uh, so to get it back to that point post-COVID has been a challenge, although we're we're definitely getting closer to that now. So there was probably 75 or 80 people or so here about 10 o'clock this past week, and um, I imagine that will grow even more this week. Last yeah. week was back to school week, which can traditionally be a little bit tough on restaurants and um, service people, but we rolled right through it with no problem. So that was definitely great for us. When we were there, you you gave me the, the pitmaster platter, which was way too much food, and I had to basically <laughs> browbeat your, your front of, uh, you know, your sales guy into, into charging me something for it. Um, <laughs> and, and it was unbelievable, but I did notice that it, it was an interesting mix of what I would consider traditional and, you know, sort of the craft style as well. 
because your brisket was more traditional. Your ribs had had sort of a traditional feel to them. But then you had a sliced pork belly. Uh, you know, your burn ends are very traditional for Kansas City. But you had a beef rib, which is not necessarily something you see a lot in that market. Um, walk me through sort of how you create your menu where you try to honor the, like you mentioned, the, the Kansas City style, but at the same time bringing that creative craft element to it. Yeah, you know, it's almost, it's come pretty organically and fairly easily. Um, just because, like I said, we have our staples, um, you know, pork, brisket, ribs. Um, the one thing that you can really do a lot of cool things with and um, something I've spent a lot of time talking to Brian Bingham about is sausage. And mm-hmm. he's as uh, creative as anybody. So sausage has been a great, um, a great way to do a traditional um, protein that there's really no traditional limits on it. So that's been a great way to kind of edge into it. And then, you know, different, we're doing different glazes for our pork belly. Last week we made a cherry gastric. This week we're doing a sweet tea. Um, and honestly, a lot of the glazes that come for our pork belly, it kind of goes hand in hand with whatever the brewery may be doing that week. So last week they were doing a wild cherry and hatch chili beer. So um, they had a bunch of cherry juice and we ended up using some of that. And they have a tea vice uh, beer that's real popular. Daniel Vaughn actually wrote about that one. And they had a bunch of cans of that beer that were like a few grams underweight to sell legally. So basically they give them to the employees and we had a big stack of that back there this week. And so we did the tea vice. Um, so yeah, it's being at the brewery has been the thing that's probably uh, helped push us in that direction because we get to use a lot of stuff that, that they have that either they're using in their beer or they're, or, um, they're going to. So that's been a big part of it coming organically. It's just kind of feeling out what the breweries do and then trying to get on the same page and trying to do something along the lines of what they're doing. That seems to make sense that week. Uh, Tyler, I, I just want to tell you, I do not appreciate you bringing up that the employees get beer because my my uh, producer, Rogers, just left. He's gone to work for Budweiser now. He's looking for all the <laughs> cans that aren't quite full so that he can take them home with him. Yeah, uh, yeah there's a lot of perks. Hey, a lot I, of perks being at a brewery. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of that, you know, you, you are basically a tenant in the brewery uh, on the Friday nights and on Saturday. Uh, is there a plan afoot to to open your own place or to move, or is that something that you're comfortable with and and you know maybe want to stay there long term? What are your plans? We well, you know we're just kind of taking it slow and playing it by ear. We're open to options, and eventually our goal is to have a brick and mortar restaurant. Um, but we're not trying to go as fast as we possibly can into that. You know, every week we acquire new customers. Our food gets a little better. We you know, every month we get a new piece of equipment for our business. So, you know, slowly but surely we're adding, um, we're, we're trying to put a new brick in the wall every, every week. And so eventually we'll look, we'll look up and we'll have enough bricks to build a house. But for right now, you know, if we get an opportunity that makes a lot of sense, we're definitely open to taking it. But, um, you know, there's just so many layers to, that go into real estate and that pattern. So I really want to make sure that I'm as knowledgeable as I can be going into that. And, mm-hmm. You know, I, I've i done okay learning with barbecue, but learning the business side uh, for somebody like me going slow has definitely been to my benefit. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Talking to Tyler Hart from Hart Barbecue in Kansas City. All right, so um, you mentioned the festival, and, and we talked about that a little bit, but I, I want to kind of know how did that come about? This was the first year. Uh, it was, you know, something that, that I know you had wanted to do and you were able to bring in a lot of folks. You mentioned you traveled to a lot of festivals yourself. Kind of take me through that process and how did this get going? Well, that kind of started as a night where uh, we were having a good time. Uh, had probably a Jim Beam or two too many. And, <laughs> uh, I had been working with Brian Bingham and Andrew Caskey both. We had been talking about for, you know, at least a year um doing an event here in Kansas City so I knew they were on board and then I kind of uh that night I got to drink and I invited about 12 other people and to my surprise I think eight or nine of them said yes and uh, then I was kind of like oh man um we really have to coordinate this now you got to put it together yeah yeah (laughs) and so it, it happened real fast and without much experience or knowledge but we got it in us. It went off without a hitch. I think everybody had a great time. All the vendors loved it. Um, and, you know, to, to get people, you know, 
like Andrew um, from Ruston, mm-hmm. Louisiana, and people that are from these a little bit smaller places, but they're putting in just as much, if not more, work than somebody in Austin or somebody in in Houston or Fort Worth or Kansas City. So, I thought it was great to be able to to get those guys a little shine because you know I know in those smaller towns people are working, like I said, just as hard, if not harder, and they deserve the recognition as well. So, we don't bring a huge platform, but uh, if we're going to do a festival, those are the kind of people I want to get some of the shine. And how did uh, how did you come out in terms of raising money? Yeah, we raised about five thousand dollars nice. for Ronald McDonald House here, which they host families at the Children's Hospital when um, people come in from out of town to have surgeries or treatments for their kids. So that's the foundation that's near and dear to my heart. And uh, for our first one, we came out ahead. We were able to scratch a check, and it was a win for everybody. And we'll look forward to building on that. Are you uh, are you a sports fan at all? I mean, I know you wear your Royals hat all the time, and you, you're obviously yeah. in, a, in a sports town. I mean, are you are you Living and dying with those guys, the Chiefs and the Royals and that crew? Absolutely. So I worked for the Royals for six years. I worked in the Visitors Clubhouse and uh, diehard Chiefs fan as well. I'm a New York Knicks fan, which is, you know, we don't have an NBA team here. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the Chiefs are on fire right now. And it's kind of unfortunate the way COVID happened right after we won the Super Bowl to where the city really didn't get to fully – reap the financial uh, benefit mm-hmm. of everything that goes along with winning a Super Bowl because businesses and bars had to shut down just weeks after. So um, we're looking forward to hopefully being able to do that again. I'm going to book my flight to Los Angeles here soon. And, um, yeah, we got a bad taste in our mouths after that Super Bowl. So everybody here is ready to get back and ready to ready to capitalize this time after winning it. Have you had any of the guys out? Have any have any of the Chiefs or the, the Royals guys showed up yet? Um so a couple of the guys that work for um, the club, the, the equipment staff for mm-hmm. the Chiefs have been out. We have fed Mitchell Schwartz as well, who is the big barbecue guy. He was an offensive yep. lineman. Yep. Uh, so actually, we just fed Mitchell Schwartz and um, a host of uh, radio station here, Carrington, from Six Ten Sports. So we got to feed those guys Wednesday. And uh, I have a feeling we will. You know, we were on another sports show here Wednesday and. With feeding the club or the uh, equipment crew, I think uh, I think our time will come, and we'll just be patient. And but you know, a lot of those guys, uh, they're pretty strict with their diets during season. But we've been working with a lot of chicken recently on our menu. So there you go, new chicken dishes, and uh, we may even evolve in a little bit of fish. So well, I don't want to we'll have- I don't want to speak out of turn, but but your head coach up there doesn't seem like his diet plan's that stringent. So uh, you know, maybe maybe yeah, yeah, we got out. we got to get big red some. We got to get big red some food for sure. Uh, you know, everybody, uh, everybody that's ran into him here has nothing but great things to say about the man, and uh, he's definitely been great for Kansas City. Yeah, and uh, well, I, the the strength and conditioning coach is actually a Northwestern State demon where I call games. So I'll give him a text. I'll tell him to to get Andy over there at some point in time. We'll we'll make that happen. Yeah. Well, I, at the Windy City Smokeout, I did meet the offensive line coach from the Packers, and he said that when they come to Kansas City in October that they will be placing an order oh. for Hart Barbecue for the O-line guys. So Beautiful. Offensive linemen are a target clientele, so that works well. Well, uh, I am, I'm an offensive lineman at heart, sir, so uh, you know, you know I was satisfied. Right Look, uh, Tyler, you treated us so great while we were there. Uh, you know, fed us well and, and you know, gave us of your time, and then obviously today – uh, all the success in the world to you, brother. You're doing absolutely incredible barbecue and with your festival now doing really great work for charity as well. All the best to you, brother. Thanks for coming by to eat. And thanks for having us on the show, Patrick. We really appreciate it. You got it. Tyler Hart from Hart Barbecue in Kansas City.